Right, it's a bit soft, a bit soft there. Oh, hang on. What's up with that? Hi, I'm John Chase. And today, I'm going to be looking at how microwaves work, how they function, and what exactly is happening to heat your food. So what you're going to need to get this done, you're going to need a microwave, you're going to need scissors, a bit of cardboard, some rope or some cable, and you also need some chocolate. So the first thing I want to get across is, what exactly is a wave? So we're going to use this to demonstrate how the waves move. Now all waves move energy from one place to another, like this. And the energy I give you on this side is transmitted to that side. So in the case of this microwave, it creates energy and that energy is transmitted through the microwave based on waves, just like the one I showed you. But actually, in this microwave, there's a special type of thing that happens to the wave. It doesn't just travel from left to right like this. It actually travels like this. It doesn't really travel from left to right, up and down. And if you look at most waves, they do just travel up and down. In the sea, the waves lift you up and drop you back down, but the waves keep on going through. So as the wave passes you, it gives you energy, and as it passes, you lose that energy again. Right, John, good name. Right, if you could just hold that side, John. This is a wave like that. And as you can see, there's a high part and there's a low part. We call these peaks and troughs. So when it changes from the high part, that's the maximum energy part. And when it gets to a trough, that's also maximum energy. We call these antinodes. And in the middle, we get what is called nodes. So if you look at this, you can see that's just one hump from top to bottom. But if you want to double that, we can put more energy into it. And we can give it an actual whole wavelength. So this is what we call half a wavelength because it's half of the crest. It only has the peak. But now, that's what it's like. Here we go. If you see this one now, as you can see, it's a lot different. We have a stationary part in the middle, about over here. And then we have the peak over here and a trough down there. Now that's a standing wave because it doesn't actually travel from me to him or him to me. It looks like it's just standing still. And the part where it's really still is the part of least energy at the node. And the part where it's highest is the part of maximum energy. We call that the anti-node. And that's the part that gets hottest in your microwave. Cheers, John. So, chocolate, microwave. Just a little note, if you just put it straight directly on the microwave, you've got to take out the spinner because it will spin your food around. And obviously that's needed to get your, your food into the different parts, into the hot spots and the cold spots to move it around. But where we've taken that off just to see exactly what happens. Now I don't want to get the microwave too dirty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a bit of card and put it on the bottom. Cue dubstep. Boom, well, well. Done. Right, so I'm going to take the chocolate, I'm going to spread it over evenly onto this. Right. Right, I can smell that lovely chocolate coming out. I love the smell of it. Right, so it all just looks the same, doesn't it? It hasn't been spinning, it's just been sitting in the microwave heating up. So we're gonna see which parts are hot, which parts are not. I'm just gonna use my finger because like that works. Right, let's start over here. Right, it's a bit soft, a bit soft there. Oh, hang on, what's up with that? Totally dry. That one, not really melted, not really melted. Oh, that one is. Oh, look at that, ah, that's good, that's good. So as you can see, 
If it isn't spinning, we get some parts that are really hot and melted and the other parts that are not. So if you just had the microwave without the spinner in it, your food wouldn't be heated very evenly. The highest part of the standing wave has created more heat and therefore the chocolate's melted. But you've also got these cool spots. So there you go. Microwaves, that's basically how they work. They set up standing waves that have energy and the energy is more in certain parts, the antinodes, and less in other parts. And where it's a lot of energy, the food is cooked. Where it's not much energy, the food isn't cooked. So make sure you've got the rotation going on in your microwave at home. And if you want to try it, go and try it. But make sure you take out the rotator in the middle. We're getting some meltage. See, I don't know if meltage is a word, but meltage is just such a perfect description for what exactly is going on. If you've got a better one, please write it below, as I'm sure you will. Criticise my use of the word meltage. Has anyone got a dictionary handy? Is meltage a word? Oh, my face.